Osiris. Thank you all for coming early to the show here tonight. Yeah, welcome Daniel to Ardmore with a, a round of applause for him. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I just want to start by saying um, I was talking to Joe on your team earlier, and he informed me, he said this is his 250th show that he's oh, worked yeah. with you. And I was like, didn't you just start last year? And he was like, yeah. And then he told me that it's the 100th show of the year. That's right which I'm still trying to wrap my head around because I don't know when you would actually spend any time at home. Yeah. Right? So yeah. happy 100 shows Thank for you. 2023. It's really exciting. Yep. Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful uh, for, for my band and everybody that is in our uh, cosmic crew that is in the band metaphorically but not musically uh, that joins us for this because it is, it is such a huge sacrifice and investment uh, but also an honor. Uh, to be out on the road this much and, and play this much music and uh, meet everybody and, and try to bring everybody together. Um, but it's very hard and it's a very intentional, focused act. And uh, so with that 100th show uh, celebration is also needed a, a, a great debt of gratitude to everybody that is involved uh, with these shows. It is, it is a lot of work. It does not happen easily. What would have been some uh, some standout shows for you this year? Uh, when us opening up for uh, widespread panic was was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was so fun. That was our I think our biggest show that we've ever done uh, up until recently when we played at See Here Now. Uh, that was a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then there's this also there's this constant omnipresent fact of it doesn't matter how many zeros there are. Um, on the on the c closeout sheet at the end of the night, there are a lot of there are some nights that really stand out to me just like frequency wise, mm -hmm. um, and I already know that tonight's going to be one of those nights. <laughs> I can tell when I walk in, uh, you know, and we sold it out. Thank you, we sold it out. It's great. Yeah, last year, last uh, last fall, we played here with the dwellers, uh, kitchen dwellers, and I, I, it was so close to being sold out. Yeah, and uh, you know, and so the whole strategy of this year was. Um, well, let's just go back to all the places we were and just roll the dice and yeah. see. Uh, so we had five sold-out shows last week, and, and we have two sold-out shows this week. Um, and then there's a couple more on, like, this 22-show tour or something like that. Amazing. Um, yeah, so it's really growing in this nice way. Are there cities that you're hitting that you've never played in, played in before? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think, did you play in State College? Was that the first? We played State College last first night. First time? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Yeah, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, it, what, do you, what do you hear from fans like when you go to a new place? I mean, what I hear in person is always positive, and then my dad has Google updates about me, and then I, he sends me the not positive stuff along with the positive <laughs> stuff, which I love. I love the not positive stuff. I like reading those as well. Um, those don't really bother me in any way. Um, but we're actually getting to the point now where people um, don't like us. Which is great. <laughs> <laughs> that means you're doing something right. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. People were like, you know, mad at me. I got a haircut. So I saw, you know, some pe people. I can't tell. I play too many notes, or um, you know, I, I my vibrato it sounds too much like a goat, or you know, uh, <laughs> or you know, the, I saw somebody talk about Sugar Leg once, who didn't know who he was, and they were like, "Who is that old lady screaming in the back?" <laughs> that was like, it was so funny, you know. Uh, awesome. You know, but that's the great thing about doing something. I think with um, with a positive intention, something that is um, born from your soul, and you're trying to reach for something that has these eternal values, of something that's truthful and good. Mm -hmm. That all of those aesthetic, temporal insults, they don't even touch that. You know, it's like water yeah. on a windshield; it just slides right off. At least for me. Nice. Yeah. Um, we we share a, a love of fish. The band. Uh, yes, we, we were do. we were talking about fish earlier, and this recent fall tour, and you know, maybe some of the shows weren't as good as we wanted them to be, or whatever. And I was we were talking about kind of analyzing music as a performer. I do a podcast, so like all I have to do is just say, you know, I analyze it from an external perspective. But from a musician's perspective, do you do you analyze your own music? How do you do that? Do you do you pay attention to 
you have like takeaways from each night and then how do you process that? And like, what's your, I don't know, what's your system? Um, well, my system uh, is I, I, I try to react the least amount that I can, um, which I think is very important. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just try to analyze after everything's over. Uh, so um, I have, I write all the set lists out in the morning. Like I wake up, I do a quick journal and then I write out the set list and I take a shower. And then by the time I get to the van and I take my guitar out in the van, the set list will change. It'll tell me that um, the tempo needs to come down here and it needs to set up another peak moment here. Because it's all kind of like a Joseph Campbell's hero's journey of each set list. You know? <laughs> right, um, right, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's always, so I analyze the set throughout the day. And then as the set's happening, um, I'll take like 10 minutes uh, on the ride back to the hotel at the end of the night and I'll put a red asterisk under uh, a song that I thought just didn't, on a frequency level, got my attention in some weird way. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, we'll usually just hit that at soundcheck, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So those are usually moments, not like full shows where you're like, uh, that just didn't, that yeah. didn't work. There's been, I guess there's been full shows, but even, even that's kind of like, that, that's not really actually true. Mm -hmm. The only time we really had bad shows are, are, is when the sound isn't happening or the gear isn't happening. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, we all have such a real connection with each other that there's never a fully, uh, you know, every song, every beat was not good or yeah. unenjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. It's usually only 30 second moments, 45 second moments at a time or, or a whole song. And yeah. when, you, when you go back to them at Soundcheck, they, you, you basically figure out how to work, work it back to feeling good. I look at it as the song is telling me something, you know, um, which sounds like an abstract thing to kind of personify something that isn't quite tangible and carbon-based, um, but it is. It's a living thing because it's coming from you and it's coming from your personality, which is almost more real than your physical being. Um, and so it's a very real, alive thing. And I look at it as the song is telling me something, you know, um, and I... I try to kind of decipher, is it me telling myself something or is it the song telling me something? Um, you know, and that's actually the, the, the great privilege that our community here kind of uh, gives us is that we're, we're able to play so many shows and everybody is coming to a lot of these shows that we can play the songs a lot. Uh, so the songs can kind of tell us what they want. And by the time we go to record the songs, we've played them a hundred plus times, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. You know. So, well, I want to just follow up quickly because you talked about the kind of broader jam scene. The formula is in some ways easier than if you're making pop music or something where it's like, what platform do you use? What, you know, what algorithm do you have to hit? Whereas with the jam scene, you just have to play a shit ton of shows. Is, have, is it that simple? Oh, I think your shows have to be truthful, beautiful, and good. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of bands that are in our scene that... Uh, you know, I, I'm really hard to please. Like, that's the kind of a thing. Like, when we go to see shows, like, it's very hard for me to be, like, my mind is blown. You know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, I, I see a lot of shows where I'm like, oh, yeah, I get it. Like, it's cool. And, you know, everyone's trying. But there's, there's not that transcendent, slippery, eternal variable that's coming all the way from the nether regions of paradise into your mind. And it's that kind of thing. And it's, you know... <laughs> and that's what we were kind of, I feel like everyone's chasing. And that's the thing that kind of renders us all to the thing of like, you know, no respecter of persons. Like it doesn't matter if it's the musicians or the fans, like everybody is chasing yeah. that, that same, fe that feeling, that, yeah. that yeah. kind of thing of where you look to the person next to you and you're like, here's why we paid $9 for a bottle of water, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's like, that's the kind of the thing. Um, it's hard. And I think it's hard to achieve those moments on stage. I th that's why I think it's, you know, for me, it's I, I very you know it, when I go to a show, I'm very in in a faithful, almost prayer like way, hoping my mind gets blown by whoever I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, you know, but I you know, but so the, the, I, before I started Cosmic Country, I was I, I used to play on a lot of people's records in Nashville as a guitar player. Mm -hmm. Like you know, so you show up at 10 a.m., you know, you park your car, you bring your Yeti mug for the coffee, and you sit down and you go into the mix room and you listen to a demo off an iPhone that you've never heard before. And they go, let's go cut this song. So the song's never been played before. Uh -huh. The band's never really jammed the song before. And you kind of just go and cut it. And then the A&R guy is in the room and he's talking. And he's like, oh, this will be, be good for this playlist on Spotify. We got to get a meeting with Ken over at 
uh, over at 97.5. We got to get lunch with him and make sure to post a TikTok about this and all that. And I think a lot of that stuff is strategically probably linear in logic, but I don't think it has anything to do with the truth or the beauty or goodness about a live connection that happens in a room with people. Yeah. You know, that stuff uh, even predates music. It just has to deal with a connection between one person to another. And that is what I feel the values of our community are kind of founded on here, is that we want to connect with each other and create something that has never happened, that will never happen again, that feels like eternity. Yeah. And it feels beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned paradise, and, and I, I, I did get some fan questions. Let's go. I think that you mentioned in an interview, or maybe, I don't know where, but somewhere, maybe in our first conversation, that Paradise City was the first song <laughs> yeah. that you played. Yeah. Is that, is that going to come into the rotation I at some point? I think it has to. I just can't sing it. That's the great uh, thing about this band, is Will and Nathan are such good singers that yeah. we can kind of divvy up with each other, like... Well, that's a that's that's an official that's an official request from a fan. I've got a couple of those requests. <laughs> you know, let me just say that is not just a song that you can kind of just whip up really fast. No. It's not like a grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> like it's yeah, like yeah. that's an amazing song with like time changes. And there is a there's one of those electronic keyboards mm. that Paige plays on Frankenstein. Mm. It's like one of the real like songs. You know, Slash is running around on stage while playing guitar. He's got like a bottle of Jack Daniels in his hand. That's, that song is a whole orchestration. But when I heard that song the, for the first time, I, I don't know what it was, man, but it, it, there, is a, um, there is a spirit of something that, was, that just turned me on. It, there was like a freedom and um, a, uh, a providence mm -hmm. that was alive in the message of that song that just turned me on. It was something that was wild. You know? And it, I never looked back. And, and it, was a, it was a few years later after that that I discovered country music and old-time honky-tonk mm -hmm. country music and western swing and all that and that's when things started really amping up and i dedicated my life to, to that whole trip really. yeah yeah if you do cover paradise city you need someone to blow like the whistle at the yeah, beginning like I'm, I'm totally in you would be I'll, a great whistle whistleblower blower. that's yeah. it and then i'll then i'll run off the stage um okay so there's an album coming out in like less than a month yeah november 10th reflection congrats thank you congrats so, tell us about the how I know I know it's been in the works for a while, but tell us about the how you did it, how you put it together, recording all that. Uh, well, Vance Powell produced it, which was it's pretty awesome. A dream, man. I, I when I was um, I think I was eighteen. I was playing down at Roberts on Broadway in Nashville, and Vance was in there one night because Roberts is kind of this uh, outlier. It's kind of the black sheep of downtown Broadway, and it's right. <laughs> you know it. Right? Yeah. There's a frequency there. and uh, I've seen you play there before. Oh, it's yeah, after Fish, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that was a wild great, night. Great vibe. Mike Gordon was there yeah. that night, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was <laughs> such a strange night, my God. <laughs> That's one of the strangest gigs. We'll have to talk more about that. Yeah. <laughs> v Vance came in one day, and as he was leaving, he said, you don't know this yet, but uh, one day you're going to make a record, and you're going you're gonna to need a producer. Call me. No way. Yeah. Wow. So like almost nine years later, you know, wow. I called him. And I was like, hey, we're making a record, you know. He said, well, come play me some songs. And so, and so he goes, send me the songs before you come over. And so we had a meeting scheduled at 11 at Sputnik Sound in Berry Hill. And around 1030, he calls me. He goes, you know, all these demos are like 13 minutes long, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, I'll explain when I get there, you know. Uh, yeah, kind of short. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and um, so Vance and I had a couple meetings. We talked about the vision of of what I wanted the record to be, and um, and the band and I uh, really rehearsed, figuring out how to take these songs from this living environment to more of a crystallized presentation. Mm -hmm. You know, the whole ethos for me of when we're playing on stage is that it's a celebration, not a presentation. Mm -hmm. It's a celebration of humanity, it's a celebration of truth, and it's an embrace with a faithful response of whatever happens, it's totally cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's totally fine, even if you don't understand it. Yeah. It's totally cool. But a record is very different. A record is a whole celebration, it is you painting the vignettes, it's you painting the shapes and it's you creating an experience that nobody else is really participating in. It's a whole different side of the window. It's kind of like a TSA window 
when you're at the airport. Yeah. Like, they can see you, but you can't see them kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of what's happening there. So, you know, we had to really figure out, like, how to do that because we'd been out on the road for over 150 shows last year, and we finished up a 27-show, a 30-day tour, and then we had, I think, a week off, and we rehearsed that week, and then we went and got the record, which was really great, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the whole thing, to, and the way that I looked at it was, you know, when you get on stage and you play hundreds of times, that's a part of the dark forest in your psyche, the, the live stage. And there's a whole slew of variables that go with that part of the forest. When you go into the forest of the studio, you need just as much experience there to be confident. But all of us, are we're not even 30 years old, you know, so we've, you know, we haven't made like hundreds of records. We haven't made a bunch of records, right. but we've played hundreds of shows. Yeah. We needed a forest guide. We needed somebody who knew like how to slay the dragon, like cut down the bushel yeah. with their scimitar and be like, go left, don't go right, you know. You know? And watch out for the booby trap here. Right. And Vance was really so good at that. And the thing about Vance Powell is he works with Chris Stapleton, he works with Jack White, he works with Fish, he works with Trey. Yeah. He works with a bunch of bands that nobody else would know that are kind of seeking that same kind of truth in the live experience, but he helps them make records. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. a hard thing to do. Um, and he was, he was so graceful and open-minded and um, decisive in that process. I, I felt it was great for us. Because there was a couple of times, too, where we were getting frustrated making that record. You know? yeah. um, but he really... He really did a great job and showed up every day. And, and so we cut 16 songs, and then it's going to be a 15-song record. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And are any of them 13 minutes long? One's, uh, yeah, we got a couple long ones. Not okay. 13 minutes. One's like eight minutes long. And then one's two parts. One, one, one LP, though. Was two LPs. On one? Okay, two. Right. Yeah, Reflector. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we just started the pre-order on, uh, on my website, and then Heady Wax is uh, doing 500 copies, and Relics is doing, I think, 2,000 copies or something like that. Don't quote me on that number, but <laughs> yeah. And they're all different variants, you know. And then when the, uh, there's a vinyl shortage right now, and then there's also a back order on vinyl. So on a, on a production level, it, it, it's kind of a, a slippery slope on how to actually make those things, but we have it ordered to when, when we start touring by the spring, we're going to have them uh, with us as well. Nice. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, thank Congrats. you. Congrats. Really yeah. awesome. Yeah. Do you, um, was it hard to figure out where, how to translate a song that you were, that you thought about from a live perspective into, it? like, are there, like you were mentioning the turns in the forest, is that for every song? Like, are there, there decisions that you have to make about how to cut something from what would be 15 minutes to six? Some stuff. There was, it was really like, a lot of it was our singing. Because with Cosmic Country, we really value our vocals, and we spend a lot of time on our vocals. And we really, we really try to serve the song more than we ever try to serve anything else. Because um, that's all you can really take with you, and that's all you can really ever give people once you're gone. You can give people tapes of something, but, you know, if there's going to be cover bands of your band playing one day, they're going to need a song for them to, to jam on, <laughs> you know. Um, so it's that kind of a thing. Yeah. So we try to serve that, and I learned all that stuff when I was playing down at Roberts. You know, you got to serve the song, you got to serve yeah. the melody. So there was kind of, there was a lot of unveiling of stuff that we weren't actually aware of that was happening live, like tempo pushes mm -hmm. and harmony rubs and harmonic rubs on parts and things like that, that, that really slide live. But when you put them under a microscope, they're kind of a bit more disorienting than they are harmonious. Mm. Um, and that's why you need to be aligned in, 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 in a loving uh, servitude to everybody that's involved in your project. And kind of just try to integrate your ego as much as you can. Because there's no killing that thing. You've got to give it a seat at the table. you just got to make sure that it's at the right seat. <laughs> you know, that's a real thing. And, and Vance was so good at that because he's just, you know, what are you going to argue with Vance Powell? Like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. He's like, that part needs to change. He's like, what are you going to do? Are yeah, you? Right. It's like, so that was, a, that was nice. And we, surprisingly enough, we didn't really need to spend too much time doing it. You know? So, yeah. Was it, um, did you use a bunch of guest session people or was it just the band? We used, uh, to my knowledge, I think just one guest who's Paul, Paul Franklin. Mm -hmm. um, Paul Franklin's a legendary steel guitar player. 
Uh, he played with Dire Straits. He played on all the George Strait records, all the Alan Jackson records. He plays with Chris Stapleton now. Um, nice. He's one of the most recorded musicians in history. Um, and, you know, I used to go see Paul play uh, at a venue called Third and Lindsley in Nashville, Nashville in a, with, with a band called The Players, which is a, all like the hot Nashville session cast. And they had this jazz band that 40 people would come see play once a month, you know, and you'd sit down and... You know, I wasn't 21 at the time, so I'd get a Coke and put a red straw on it, so it looked like I was. <laughs> and, you know, you watch him play, and, and you do that whole thing. And Paul was just, he's just a virtuosic musician. And all these guys are just heroes. You know, they're rock stars, but they wear, you know, New Balance shoes and drive Mazdas. And it, <laughs> it, but there's, it's really a brilliant, graceful thing, because, you know, he comes into the studio, and we're like, okay, we got, we got you for four hours. We paid you 500 bucks, uh, you know, plus pizza. Here are the songs. Let's yeah. go. You yeah. know, he's never heard him before. And the, the first take on one of the songs was just like a tear to my eye, you know, just brilliant. Um, and Vance, Vance helped make that happen because of his work that he does with Chris Stapleton all mm -hmm, the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I really wanted this record to be a, a Cosmic Country record. And it's the first Cosmic Country record. And, yeah. and, and so it's like, you know, I didn't, I didn't really see the need to have, like, any duets. Or my label was like, well, how, how about, you know, this girl for a duet? Or how mm -hmm. about, you know, bring this guy in for, like, a saxophone solo? And I was very, um, I have this whole thing of, like, with the internal, external world, like, everything, like, literally everything, I think, externally, is somewhat of a compromise. you got to compromise with everybody that you're working with and, and, and meet them where they're at and see the value in their perspective. But on an internal truth level which are usually pertaining to macro concepts of a vision, you really can't compromise. Yeah. Because otherwise the foundation of the infrastructure that you're creating with your mind is completely changing. And that was something that I, I really was adamant with. I was like, I want it to be the four of us doing what we do yeah. on a record for people to hear and enjoy. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, and we did it. It was yeah. good. So Congrats. we'll see if you guys like it. I don't yeah. know. We love it. <laughs> I mean, it sounds exciting. The way you describe it, I think we're, we're already, we're sold. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so um, a couple more questions. I think, um, so you go play 100-something shows a year, and then you go home home for short periods of time, but when you're on the road, there's lots of people here yeah. selling out, everyone's cheering for you, and then you go and you get in the van and go to the next place. How do you how do you balance that all? Like, not not just physically, which I think seems like it would be hard, hard. but like also mentally, you're, I'm sure there's a lot of ups and downs with travel and then the peaks of the shows and then, you know, everything in between. How do you stay balanced and how do you stay humble, but also like also hungry? Cause, cause you, you gotta, you gotta do that. That's what Bruce told us. You gotta um, stay hungry. Bruce yeah. Springsteen, you know? Yeah. He talks about that fire. Yeah. 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 I mean, he's, that's a great yeah. metaphor. Yeah. Now, I think there's a, I think there's a, there's definitely, there's, there's kinds of forces that you can use in the world. You can use manipulative forces to organize teams like people might do. And if they're building like a software product, like my dad works in software, you know, and the, mm -hmm. in the, in the project managers, you know, they have meetings and they use these communication tactics to try to organize people and all that. But music is a, is a, is a, is a, uh, it's in between the temporal and the eternal music. And so it, I think it has to be fueled by a spiritual force, even if you're conscious of it or not. I, so for me, I, I don't really have a hard time ever reminding myself why I'm doing this. I, I feel like I'm doing the will of what it's trying to tell all the time. And I'm just trying to serve that and just stay humble to that. Um, and then I also think something that's really worth remembering is that, um, you know, love transcends logic. We don't really know what love is. We don't really fully understand what that force is and how it works. And, and trying to, I think, just love everybody that you're with every day really helps mm -hmm. on a cosmic level. It really does. If you really love everyone that you're with and to really love somebody means you can get pissed off at somebody or they can get pissed off at you and you can look mm -hmm. them in the eyes and give them a hug mm -hmm. when it's done, mm -hmm. you know. And that's a really big, that's a really big thing, man. Um, because, you know, before Cosmic Country, I was touring with a lot of bands that everybody was just getting paid and everyone didn't really love the songs and they were just kind of there just to do it. And you can tell the music doesn't come alive. It's kind of like, um, it's like a taxidermed animal. Like, it looks like an animal, but it's not. It's, like, not alive. It, like, looks like it. 
It's not breathing, it's not moving, it's not interacting with you. And you need, you need a living spark of truth mm -hmm. and love to be in those frequencies and those notes to really communicate with yeah. that part of people's hearts. Um, I don't know, really. I, 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 everyone asks me, how do we do it? I have no idea how we do it. <laughs> I really don't, because it's actually a crazy endeavor. Yeah, yeah it, <laughs> seems, gonna, it seems insane. Yeah, it's like get six hours of sleep at a crappy hotel and like eat an Uncrustable and brush your teeth and get on to the next show. It's like, it's, it's great, though, you know? Because <laughs> it's also, there's something that's so Jack Kerouac and American about it. Like, if you're, you know, you're really, it's like a very manifest destiny approach to yeah. things. Um, you know, I look at it as a great privilege on a deep level and also a great responsibility. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about 2024. I know there's already stuff happening. Yeah. I mean, you have to, you have to have everything planned out already. What, what's, what's on the, what's on the calendar? What are you excited about looking at next year? Yeah, I, I, this is the interesting thing about what we do is I feel like the trip of what we do is kind of the same. You know, we play songs to people that want to hear it, and we go to the next town, and some of those people follow us. Yeah. And, you know, maybe the scale of that keeps growing. Um, we keep developing our sound and, and focusing on that. I mean, that's the number one priority that I always have is just our sound and whatever that means, which means a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so th on some level, it's not, like, it's not like what Apple did when they went from Intel processor to M2 processor, where it was like a whole hardware change, mm -hmm. and they had to hire all these people to do things. I just want to keep growing and doing the same thing that we're doing. Um, but we're just going to keep going as hard as we can until we have to sh slow it down to like 70, <laughs> 80 shows a year. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Until, some, until a girlfriend or, or, or somebody's wife is like, hey, we need to, I need to see yeah. my, you know, I need to see these guys more. Stop touring so much. Be like, okay, fine, we'll the stop. The first band baby, maybe. Yeah. Right? That's like, yeah. The first band baby or, or, or something like that. You know, it's like, you kind of see it with bands like and this is the great thing about being in the band is you're not really inventing you're not reinventing the wheel i mean fish didn't even reinvent the wheel they just made a really great wheel yeah um and it, it you know wheels make contact with the road <laughs> yeah it's you know it's just a wheel but it, it, it's your wheel and you just got to keep constructing it and keep refining it and keep doing it you know and and that's really you know it, it, i feel so lucky because there's there's so many bands out there that don't kind of, they don't have these uh, elements of of the fruits of life that, that that we have in our trip right now. And um, I was in those bands for a while, and I played with artists that were in those bands for a while. And I can tell what we have right now is just so special. So, you know, I'm just we're just gonna keep doing the same thing that that we've been doing, and just you know add more zeros. Really, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, all right, we're gonna do like one more question yeah. um from a, from a fan i i you played with so many people i know that um and i know you love to play i just a quick anecdote we went to fish last not this july but the last july and, right. and we we dropped we dropped you off in front in the minivan See after the fish dogs. show yeah. and my wife was like are you sure are you gonna be okay and you're like i'm, I'm fine you hopped out with your yep. guitar and went and sat in and played like you'll you'll play it seems like you'll play anytime yeah. It, like, do you do you get different things out of sit-ins and like collaborations with with other people that you like? How how does that work in terms of contributing to your music? Oh man, I mean, when when somebody's on stage, that is essentially you're getting to see how they go about doing this thing. You know, and that's a big deal. You yeah. know, you no, know, it doesn't matter who it is. I'm I, I'm really like. On some level, I'm, I'm no respecter of persons on that level. Like, you know, playing with, um, sitting with my friends at Robert's, uh, when they go to sync the microphone, I'm trying to see what they're trying to conjure in the same way as when I was sitting with Bobby Weir. Mm -hmm. And he went to go sing Hound Dog, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, or when he went to sing El Paso, and it was like, you know, uh, you know so, because you get to see how does this person interact with their soul and in, in, in how, how does that look and how does that feel to you? And, you know, the thing that's quite startling is that there, however, there's 8 billion people alive right now, roughly, and, and everybody has a different personality. There's no repeat of variation. How is that? So that means, you know, there's an infinite amount of variation, which means there's an infinite amount of ways to go about doing this thing. 
So I'm just really curious to see how everybody goes about doing it, you know. Um, and, and I respect and, and, and am touched by some other, other people more than others, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's really wild to see the differences. You know, some people close their eyes the whole time and they don't even look at the audience except for, you know, a total of three minutes combined over, an, over a three-hour show. Yeah. And that's brilliant, you know. Um, and then some people are, you know, running around the stage and they're, Russian Budweiser cans and smoking American Spirit Yellows and the whole crowd's going crazy. And that's a great thing to witness too. I'm just obsessed with the variation of, of how you can go about doing this wild thing that is music. Yeah. You know, we don't even really know what that means because yeah. it's, it's invisible, it's invisible geometry. Yeah. You know, fueled by somebody's soul and their intention, like that's a weird thing for a bunch of stoned apes to be doing. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I'm obsessed with seeing how everyone goes about doing it. You know, Kanika Moore, when she's done singing, she sits down, even if there's 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. She did it in Baltimore the other night when I was playing with Bill Freud. She sat down yeah. on stage, 5,000 people, <laughs> done singing. Don't care, I'm going to sit down. It's like, great, you know, I would never have thought about sitting yeah, down yeah. when I'm done singing, you know. It's cool to see that. It's, yeah. really, it's really cool, and it, it's such a privilege. And, um, you know, I love playing with, with people, man. It, it, it's a great thrill. It is, yeah. But there, I really love playing with Cosmic Country more than I, I, I've played with any other band in my life. I, That's awesome. Yeah. Congrats. That's great. <laughs> Just the, the last thing on this topic is um, another fan question. One to two bucket list artists to collaborate with. Um, that are alive? I think alive, probably, yeah. Because of AI, you know, we could yeah, do some yeah, stuff yeah. now. Yeah. Um, uh, like collaborate with like in the studio or I play with live? I think either. I'd love to play guitar with Bob Dylan. That'd be really nice. Yeah. Uh, Bob Dylan's had a lot of great guitar players that have influenced me like Mike Bloomfield and, and Robbie Robertson and Mark Knopfler mm -hmm. have all played with mm -hmm. Bob. Yeah, uh, you know, The Dead and Bob did a record. Um, I'd love to play with Bob Dylan before I, I can't anymore. And then let me think of a, of a, of a female artist to kind of level out the coin there. Um, first person that comes to my mind would be Sierra Farrell. Nice. Because um, her and I used to busk on the street at the same time when we were both, Wow. you know, yeah. I would be set up there with my battery powered amp and she'd be down on the other side of the street with like, yeah, <laughs> you know. She's so truthful. She's the truth, you know. She would have like three pit bulls and... Like, she would just have, like, a cardboard sign that was, I remember one said it was, like, need a down payment for a Greyhound bus <laughs> or something. It was, like, I was, like, 15 years old, yeah. you know, and I was just always moved by what she was doing. And, and we both kind of had this um, ascension in terms mm -hmm. of a community and what we're doing. So, you know, someone that I'm more intimately associated with that I've spent you know, nights hanging out till like four in the morning drinking bourbon with yeah. would be her. And then, you know, I've never met Bob Dylan, but it, to play with Bob Dylan would be, I think probably be the ultimate uh, experience. But, you know, I've gotten to play with Widespread Panic and Bill Kreutzmann and Bob Weir this year and, and Billy Strings came and sat in with us this year. And those were all artists that I was really hoping to play with, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, you know, I have this weird theory that the imagination is somewhat of a forecast of the future if you pursue space and time with enough faith. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm starting to notice that these things that were happening in my mind, all of a sudden, X number of years later, they're in my Google calendar. <laughs> you know? And so I, I'm just hoping, you know, we just keep going yeah. and see where it goes, man. Take it as far as we can. That's awesome. Just like Eggie. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd like to play with Trey, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that... Just, yeah, it'll end up in the Google Calendar, you know? The Google Calendar. You, you just just keep thinking about it. All right. Um, so we have a new album coming out in less than a month. Um, is there any way, are you, you up for playing a, playing a song? Yeah. Um, for, for the folks? Um, I'm going to step aside so Daniel can play, but thank you guys all for coming to this. Thanks to Rhythm. Thanks to the Artmore Music Hall. Um, I'm RJ from Osiris, and um, thank you guys so much. Thanks. Give it up for RJ. Yes. Yes. Uh, does anyone want to hear a song? I didn't really plan any songs. Okay. Let's hear it.
ये ही है मजा Kind of sounds like, kind of sounds like a bluegrass song, which is wild. Uh, what are we playing? What are we? No, what are we? What's on the record that that we're not that we're not playing tonight? Um, we're playing a lot of songs off the record tonight. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Let's see. Will I blue past the offering? Wreck the whole damn scene. Never knew what could have been. And I took a getaway. Found out what it means. What I've dreamed ain't what I've seen She used to nudge me And try to budge me I didn't want to kick and scream I tried to find her Stuck halfway in between Homesick with its stick To see the light Parade them goes to fight Sleep it off, burn it off, take another bite. Don't you lose that line of sight. She used to nudge me and try to budge me. Didn't want to kick and scream. I tried to find her, and I didn't mind her. Stuck halfway in between. so much thank you everyone's coming to the show tonight that's here all right cool 
We can all grab a drink and enjoy yourselves and smoke a joint or something. Yeah. Or vaporizers. We'll see you all very soon. Thank you so much thanks. for coming out thanks, here Thanks, Daniel. Today. Thanks for doing this. Yep. And thank you, RJ and thanks, Osiris. Everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Osiris.